Hi, my name is Juana Lindner and I'm a research associate within the School of Psychological Sciences uh, in the University of Manchester. Cancer-related cognitive impairments, or also it's been termed chemo brain or chemo fog, actually refers to cancer and treatment-related cognitive impairments. And it refers to a cluster of symptoms to do with uh, lack of concentration, uh, difficulties with memory, difficulties when multitasking, and it's the sort of symptoms people usually get when, after they have gone through chemotherapy and a lengthy cancer-related treatment. I was away working on a cruise ship uh, with P&O, um, and one morning I literally woke up and found a lump in my neck. It didn't feel right, so I went to the medical centre um, on the ship. Um, and they found a mass in my chest on the x-ray. I was a million miles away from home, um, so a bit scary. Uh, so they did test, they did a biopsy in the hospital. Um, and I was in the hospital for a week um, when I got the results back and it was a doctor in Halifax that told me um, that it was Hodgkin lymphoma. I did six months of chemotherapy at Cheltenham um, General Hospital um, and then I had a month off to rest and then uh, a month of radiotherapy as well. I think it was about four to five months in that I noticed that I couldn't concentrate properly but I thought it was just to do with the you know just being tired and just the treatment and I thought as soon as it finished that I would just it would just wear off and I'd feel myself again. It's very important to, to say that chemo brain in general uh, it's been it is being referred to as such because it is difficulties with something to do with thinking, with cognition, with mental abilities. The symptoms people report and w what we're also picking up with neuropsychological tests are difficulties in concentration, problems with memory abilities, uh, difficulties switching very rapidly between tasks and also when doing very demanding things all at once. The doctor at the hospital that was doing my treatment um, told me, especially with my kind of treatment, to expect it. Um, but it was just very difficult to understand. I noticed my concentration was poor, uh, my focus was really bad, I couldn't focus on TV and I couldn't focus on daily life. When they say mental fog that's the best way to describe it. It's such a mental block in your mind, you can't just think about normal things, things you take for granted that your brain just does automatically, you just can't think straight. I was forgetting words when I was in mid-conversation, I'd just completely stop because I couldn't think of the right word. Spatial awareness, I would go out the house on one of my regular walks and you couldn't, you couldn't justify how far a wall was from you or like how big the pavement was. Um, I did go through depression, but I don't know if it was a mix of fatigue and chemo, but I definitely went through depression. It makes you feel very low, very, very low, and you have very dark days. And it doesn't help when you've got a year off just doing chemo treatments and you're sitting by yourself with your own thoughts. If someone were to be concerned about uh, their chemo brain symptoms or these difficulties in thinking, uh, committing information to memory, switching rapidly between tasks, uh, it would be good if they were to speak, first of all, to their consultant, uh, trying to access the psycho uh, social and psycho-oncology services and even memory clinics that might be available. Some of the coping mechanisms or ways to cope with these sort of symptoms that uh, many psychologists and also many patients said that helped them were to first take things one, one at a time, uh, not to uh, uh, attempt to do very demanding activities all at once and trying to delegate some of these activities. Also keeping a diary, a list of the schedule or the things that people uh, you, one might want to do uh, is also quite helpful. Also following a healthy diet, uh, engaging in light exercise are some of the strategies that might work in these sort of circumstances. Exercise is so important. I would make sure that no matter how low I felt and how tired I felt, I'd make sure that I went out for a walk every evening. I think writing lists is definitely helpful. Following the tips that are available on, for example, on the Lymphoma Association website, uh, pacing themselves and taking it sl slower throughout these activities and also giving themselves some time to rest if they actually feel tired. Even try some mindfulness exercises that can be freely, uh, can be found freely available on the internet. I found a lot of information on the internet. Reading articles about um, 
chemo brain and just in general what, what to expect. Another tip would be trying to solve mental exercises such as doing puzzles, games that engage one's uh, concentration and memory abilities. It's important to keep your mind active as much as you can even though it's all slowed down and you're tired. Um, definitely doing crosswords and puzzles on your tablet as well really helped me. Being open about these sort of symptoms uh, with your friends and family will help reduce the burden uh, what you might be feeling uh, and the worry towards these cognitive symptoms. I found that speaking to my friends and my family definitely helped um, just get my feelings out there so it wasn't just in my head. It is very important not to uh, feel embarrassed about it. Uh, ha having been diagnosed with cancer and undergoing a lengthy and a difficult treatment is difficult for everybody. So trying to uh, not worry yourself too much and not put extra pressure on yourself during the time when you're trying to cope with the survivorship experience. I wasn't embarrassed about it at all. I think it's important to get the word out there and let people realise how you feel and even if people don't understand you feel better yourself just explain it to people as well. There is light at the end of the tunnel because uh, we are actively going into research into this area. There are several trials and there are several st studies that are being conduct conducted throughout the UK and taking part in these trials is always important because it helps researchers find a targeted way to help people cope with the, these symptoms and will also ease the symptoms in the patients who are concerned about them. You always hear about chemo brain, but I never thought it would be me um, that would get it, but I, I definitely suffered from it. We don't yet have enough information regarding uh, the length of time that chemo brain symptoms uh, might last. There's uh, active research going into that area right now. I was expecting it to finish and to get better when treatment finished, but you find after treatment it gets a lot worse and it lasts a lot longer than you expect it to, and that's when it makes you angry and you just, just get fed up. I think it's definitely important to embrace and accept what has happened to you. Trying to find out whether these sort of effects are temporary or long-lasting. And these sort of key questions will drive our search for a targeted way to help people manage, cope and also intervene when these, uh, these symptoms, symptoms have already occurred. Don't try and rush the process. You need to go through the process. This will happen for six months to a year after chemo as well. Um, you don't need to explain yourself to people another thing, which is what I thought I had to do. Um, you just need to relax, take each day as it comes um, and understand that it's normal and it's, you just need to accept it. I can't believe how much in seven months I recovered. I never expected it to be such a quick process. I lost my hair and I lost my eyebrows um, and it's all come back within six months and I'm back to work as well. I'm working two days a week, three days a week sometimes. Um, and I think that's really helped me a lot just to get back into the process of things and get back into life and normality. I've been through this and I've got a story to tell so I'm excited to get back to what I enjoy.